Hey guys, welcome back. And this is the next video in the coding part we will be doing. And we are going to solve the next problem in the problem set. We like look at it in the descending order. So the next problem which has maximum number of people solving it is way too long words. That's what it means. Like. So we will be solving that problem in this video. So without any further ado, let's jump into the video. So let's go ahead and see what the problem is asking us to Sometimes some words like localization, internationalization are so long that writing them many times in one text is quite tiresome. You've got a great script, two long words, more than 10 characters. So what they want us to do is, if the words have strictly more than 10 characters, they are considered as way too long words. Okay. Now for these, we got to create something like an abbreviation. So for the abbrevi what we will be doing is, if it's more than 10 characters, we take the first letter, we take the last letter and we write it as uh, like L and 10 N means L, the first letter, N, the last letter and the how many letters are there in between them? So, O, C, A, L, I, Z, A, T, I, O. That's 10 letters in between L and N. So, what we got to do is write that as L, 10, N. So, similarly, like internalization, you take the first letter which is I, and you take the last letter which is N, and you count the remaining letters. How many letters are there between I and N? And you return that. So, I, then 18 letters are there between I and N, and then you return the last letter. So similarly, you got to check if the characters in the word are more than 10, then you do this kind of abbreviation. If it's lesser than 10, you just return the word. That's what we got to do. So how the input works is, the first line will contain how many words you're going to be getting in this. And then followed by that, the, the words. And what you got to return as output is, if it's more than 10 characters, the abbreviation, if it's, le if it's 10 or lesser than 10, you got to return the words as it is. So that's where what, what we are going to be doing. And for that, we'll use our IDE, IntelliJ IDE. And watermelon the Java is the previous video which we created on this, and that's the first problem we solved. So if you want to see how we solved that, go and click the I button on the top or check the second or the third link in the description. You should find it. And you could also find it in my YouTube channel, the video just before this. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So first we got to create a class, right? This is a file also. So we create a Java class and we'll name this as way to long words. So it's easy for us to later come back to this. In the previous video, the watermelon video, for getting input, we use the scanner class in Java. In this video, we'll be using the buffer reader class because majorly we are focusing on only strings. So buffer reader is a better class to use. So let's go ahead and do that. So we call the main function and then we call the buffer reader. We name that as br new buffer reader new input stream reader and system dot in. So this is basically just the thing which you gotta write for getting the input in buffer reader. And for buffer reader it throws an exception. So we write throws io exception. That's all. First, we got to get the number of inputs we are going to get. So we say that int n and buffer reader, how you do it is the famous one is br.readline. But the problem with this is that br.readline reads a string and we want an integer. So to convert from a string to an integer, what you got to do is you use integer.parsen. So we say integer dot parse in and we wrap br dot readline inside the parameters. So br dot readline will read the like for example in this input it reads 4 and then it will integer dot parse in will convert that 4 which is a string to an integer and we'll show that in n and we got to do it like 4 times right so we'll use a for loop for that so for int i equal to 0 i lesser than n and i plus plus. So that's four times. And each time we gotta get the string input 
which is again br dot v line. So it would start off with word, and now what we're going to do is first check uh, or store the length of the input we got. So I'm going to declare another int called a, and I'll call that as input dot length. Now this would give me the length of the input. Like in the words case, this first one will give me four. This one will give me twelve. And for this one, I think it's twenty. And for this one, it's like forty-five to the last one. So let's see. And when you get this, what we got to do is check for the length. So if if A's length is greater than ten, what we got to do? Print basically. So we do system dot out dot print the length. First, we have to print the first character, which is in localizing case L. So we like. Turn it into a character. You say input dot char at, and this is the first index, so zero. But when you do input dot char at, it converts it into a character, not an int, not a string or something. So we got to convert it to a string back. So first we got the string, we just took the first character, and then now we got to convert it back to a string. So to do that, what you got to do is we do character dot to string. This will again convert a character to a string. Plus, basically we are concatenating it. And what we got to do in the middle, we got to give the length, right? A minus two, and that's an integer. So we got to convert it to a string, right? Because we are printing a string. Let's go ahead and convert that. And to convert an integer to a string, we got to do string dot value of, and inside the parentheses the integer, and Last, we got to give the last letter or the character. So let's do that again. This time, it's same way. So we do input dot char at a minus one because the length minus one will give you the last character. Now this is the character. We got to convert it to a string. So character so to string. Now this is pretty complex. But you will get it. I'll explain it again. Well, not actually that complex. It just looks like too many words put together. But it's not at all complex. You got to put just print the answer. So what we first have to do is the question is the length has to be strictly more than ten characters. So we see the length if it's greater than ten, and if it's greater than ten, what we got to return? We got to return the first character. And then the number of characters between the first and the last one, and then the last one. So to return the first character, we use input dot char at to return the first character, and we are returning as a string, right? So we got to convert that character to a string, and to convert the character to a string, we use the character class, which is character dot to string. That's similar to how the integer dot pass int works. Here, character to a string. Here, it's integer to a string to an integer. That's what this thing does. And next is we have to return the number of characters between the first and the last. That is basically length minus two. So length minus two, and this is an integer. So we got to convert the integer to a string, right? So we do string dot value of that converts the integer to a string again. Plus the last character, which is the length minus one, because in strings or in arrays, in programming language, we start with an index of zero. So Length minus one will be the last character. This should print the whole thing. But if it's not greater than ten, we just print the input. So let's see for this inside, and let's run this. Remove the big point, and I just copy this whole thing. You paste, copy, and you paste it here. So you got four is word. Word kind of repeats to be word. Localization L ten n because L is first and then you have ten characters in the first and the last and then the n. Then I in first and last is eighteen and then n and then p and then last is yes. So since this works out perfectly, and let's go ahead and let's submit our code. So this file is named as way too long words and let's go ahead and let's submit. yeah it's working perfectly fine. We have submitted and accepted for all the test cases like. So that's it from me in this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. And for the next video, what problem we're going to be solving is this one. It's called as theta square. You guys can go and check it out.
and see how to solve this problem. And if you guys get the solution, please wait up. I'll be putting the video tomorrow, and you can see my solution too. So it'll be pretty fun. Until then, it's goodbye from me, and have a great day.